Well, hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to In the Kitchen with Tally Faye. I hope everybody had a good day today. Everybody feeling blessed? I know I am. It's been a beautiful day here in Iola, Texas. So I'm feeling good. I hope y'all are too, feeling blessed and happy. Everybody's happy and doing good. Let's lift all those up in our prayers that ain't, right? Keep them in our prayers. I'm working on some supper tonight in here, y'all. And really, I'm just cooking. It's one of these nights where I'm just cooking uh, because I really don't have, you know, too much measurements for y'all on this. But it's easy to do, and I want you to watch how I do it, okay? I mean, I've done something like it kind of before or whatever, but I'm just kind of vamping some of it up, all right? And it's a, it's a kind of a creamy uh, beef and roasted red pepper dish. I'm going to do it in the skillet, and we'll just, you, uh, you'll see how it all comes together, but... I'm, I'm, I gotta get my beef ready first, okay? So what I've got here, y'all, I went ahead and started cutting some of it up. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead. I've got me some oil in my skillet over here. I'm gonna start getting my oil hot. I want my oil to start getting hot and I'll take us over there eventually, but I wanna show you the prep work on it, okay? So what I've got here is I got me a pack that has these beautiful tenderized beef cutlets in them, okay? It, it's tenderized. It, it, it's just wonderful. This makes a beautiful chicken fried steak, y'all. So, with it being tenderized like that, you just know it's already going to be good, okay? But what I do is I take these. I had three of these in a pack for Buzz and I, okay? That's what it's going to take for us tonight, what I'm going to do in this skillet. And you just take it, and I'm going to cut it in these strips, right? And all you're wanting to do is cut it in some bite-sized pieces. So say I got it cutting them strips like that, and I'm just gonna go along here and just cut it, just like that, okay? And that's how I got it. Oh, oh, good save, okay? So see, I got all these ten, uh, these bite-sized pieces in here ready to cook. Now, what I've got over here is my flour. I've got me about a cup of flour in this bowl, y'all. I'm gonna season it up real good with some salt. I'm gonna season it kind of heavy. Season it kind of heavy with that because it's gonna be my coating in there. So, because I'm not putting nothing on my meat. So it's salt and some pepper, some black pepper here. Oh, I forgot my garlic powder. I'm gonna get me a little bit of garlic powder. Gonna put me just a little bit of garlic powder in there in that flour. Okay. There's just some seasoning for it. Stir it all up. Easy peasy, right? Get it mixed up in there while my grease is getting hot. I'm gonna take these bites of meat here and get them coated in this flour. I gotta get them dredged in this flour. And I'm just taking me a little dinner plate here and I'm gonna put it on there. Just kind of shake it off. Get them coated good, okay? That's the first thing we got to do is get our meat coated and our grease getting hot for us to fry these up in. That's the first thing we're going to do. Okay. Last little bit of pieces here. Got them all coated in my flour. Shake it off a little bit and just put them on my plate here. Okay. I got my plate ready with them all right see my meat's all floured up now we're fixing to go over here by the stove and get set up and start frying this meat up okay so i've got my oil hot i think let's see yep just start now shake off some of that excess flour in there on them right just pick them up and give them a little shake kind of shake them a little bit start dropping these meat pieces in here Got to get them fried up and get a crust on them. Get them fried up, get them crusty, and we'll go on with the next batch. 
Okay, I've just been standing here kind of stirring them around a little bit. Got them ready to take up, y'all. They got a good crust on them. You could eat them just like that. That's a chicken fried steak bite right there, y'all. Look at it. Right? That's all that is right now. It's a good old bite of chicken fried steak. Just get them took up. And get on with the program. I'm going to finish this second skillet of them. Just like I did the first round. Shake that excess flour off of them. Because it's going to leave plenty of goodie in the bottom for you to for us to make our gravy with when we get ready to get that far. It makes its own gravy, y'all. But we're going to get these uh, thrown in here and get them fried up. Okay, I got them took up. Those are cooked and ready. So I'm going to set them to the side. Let me turn this fire off a second. I got to take up, oh, some of this grease now out of here. Most of this grease. We don't want all of that in there. But we want that good stuff in the bottom, right? So I'm going to let that settle a second. All right, there we go. Let me wipe this off. Okay, now see what I got left in there? See that? Let's see, there you go. Now you can see it. It's got that brown gravy drippings in there and stuff, and there's some oil in it, but it's just very little, very little. So I'm gonna take my meat and just dump it right back in here now, my meat bites. There we go, okay. Take them, and now I have me one big old chopped onion. I got him chopped up, y'all. And you just put it right in, dump it right on top of it, just like that, okay? There's our onion. And now I've got this jar of them. It's the roasted whole uh, red peppers in here. See how they're roasted like that? It's the roasted, and I got the HEB brand. These are wonderful. Let me get over here where I can get it open and get some out. Okay, so I just dug them out of there. See, I got about half of that jar. This is a 12 ounce jar here. So I got them out of there and I'm just gonna take them, y'all. I'm gonna get my scissors right here. I'm just gonna cut them up like this. Roasted red pepper all in here, okay? It's gonna be delicious in it. You put however many, much of it you want in there, right? Well, I love these bites of the roasted red pepper and the onion, so I'm gonna have plenty in my cheesy gravy that's coming up with it. But this is one of the most important parts that we're fixing to do, and that is you gotta be patient with it and give it time to cook and simmer. That's where you can go find something else to do or go do something else in your kitchen or whatever. But you're gonna let this simmer with the lid on it for about 45 minutes, okay? All right, there we go. I got my onions and my red peppers, roasted red pepper on there, ready to go. Now I've got me uh, three cups of water in this measuring cup. I've got three cups of water. I'm gonna take it and I've got me some beef bouillon. Let's get us about a, this is a cereal spoon. I'm getting me about a, I don't know, that much beef bouillon in there. That looks about like two teaspoons probably. Stir it up a little bit in there. My beef bouillon. I'm gonna turn my fire back on y'all. Stir that around in there. And we're gonna take it and just pour it right over this. Okay? Just like this. Now, what we're not gonna do is stir it or nothing. We're gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna put my lid on it. Get my big old lid out of here. We're gonna 
put this lid on it. We're gonna uh, let it simmer, turn the fire down and let it simmer for 45 minutes. I'm gonna walk back over here in just a little bit. I don't know, about every 20 minutes or something, maybe 15 minutes or so, and give it a stir. Check it, just check it. And because some of that goody and stuff will start sticking, you know, uh, adheres to the bottom. And that's when it'll start mixing your gravy and stuff and everything kind of mixes together. But right now, leave it alone for say 15 minutes, okay? Let it sit there and simmer, and then come over here and stir it a little bit and stuff and everything. But we're gonna let it simmer covered for 45 minutes, all right? Give it a stir every now and then. We'll be back with this delicious recipe, y'all. Alrighty, y'all. So it's been cooking for almost 45 minutes. It's it's really, it's ready. Let me turn it down low here. Even lower. See if I can get it a little lower to stop there. Let me see. Woo. Okay. There's what we're looking at so far. <clears throat> so far. Y'all look at it. Okay. See, and I've been, every now and then, giving it a stir. But all that meat is tender. You got all that good liquid in there, gravy liquid-like, right? Now, we're going to add our cheese. Make sure you scrape all that goodie off the bottom. That's good stuff there. I'm just going to take what I've got left of this hunk of Velveeta here, y'all, and cube it up in there. I'm just going to take it and just do this, right? Just like this. If I had more Velveeta, I'd probably do more Velveeta, but it doesn't matter. I've got my pepper jack and I'm gonna use that. So, you know, you use at least one of these two cheeses. I would, I definitely the Velveeta, okay? That's the main thing is using the Velveeta, but I got me some pepper jack here to compensate for my uh, shortness on my Velveeta. And how can pepper jack not be good in anything, right? So, I'm going to take it and just cube me some up in there. And it makes a cheesy gravy-like thing, or creamy. It ends up being just all creamy and delicious. Now, I've got my fire on real low. I'm going to stir that up in there, just like that, right? Stir that up in there, put the lid back on it. And I'm just going to let it sit there and bubble real, real, real easy because all we're wanting it to do now is melt the cheese. It's done and ready. It's waiting for the cheese to melt, okay? So we get that done, and we're going to take some of it up and get us a bite. Okay, let's check and see if this cheese is melted in there yet. See if I can get it to stir in now. Oh, yeah. Look at this, y'all. And see, this is when, because this is a gravy, it's a cheesy gravy mixture flavor, right? And so, this is when you make up your mind if you want to make, have mashed potatoes to ladle it over, which is delicious, okay? It's delicious over mashed potatoes. You can do rice. I guess you can do pasta if you want to. I've never done pasta, but you know, some kind of good pasta and ladle it over it. But mashed potatoes is my favorite with it, y'all. But of course it is. I'm old country girl. I like mashed potatoes. But do that and serve it up with something green on the side. Look at it. That is ready, y'all. That's how you do it. Just like that. There it is. I'm going to turn my fire off. Let me get... A spoon here. I'll take a sum up on this little saucer so we can see it up close. Ooh. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all look. Look at that. I'm telling you. Mm mm mm. Mm mm. I wonder if I can get a bite of it. Ooh, my goodness. I want a bite of one of them peppers. Y'all look at that. Like I say, it's a gravy. It makes a gravy with the flour and all that that comes off of there. 
but when you add that cheese, it just takes it to a whole different realm. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my goodness. Oh. It's delicious, y'all. This is some good stuff. This is good stuff. Y'all don't be scared to make this. It really wasn't that hard. I don't think so. A few little steps, but not that much. You get you some tenderized beef cutlets, and it's easy peasy. There it is, y'all. Ready to go over some mashed potatoes or something. Whatever you come up with. I love y'all. I hope y'all have a wonderful evening, okay? Get in there and make you some of this, y'all. It's good. It's worthy. All right? I'll take care, stay blessed, and I'll see you next time in the kitchen with Tally Faye.